My heart goes out to Chief Justice Maraga today and even his family and uh, I ask God to protect him and his family. I ask God to give him grace and strength to go through this very, very difficult time. And for what? Just for standing for justice and doing his job. Now, um, I don't know what's going to happen next because we are seeing uh, the president on an all-out attack and his deputy on, on an all-out attack on the chief justice. Um, and the Supreme Court and in my view this is diverting attention from the real issue the real issue do you know what the real issue is here the real issue is massive fraud massive fraud against the Kenyan people because any judge let alone a Supreme Court judge any judge cannot pick up a ruling from the air yeah all judgments are based on evidence presented even if you bribe a judge yeah, he will have to find evidence to base his judgment on. And it was clear to the whole world that uh, the evidence that it should be clear to anybody who can open their eyes, that the judgment which was passed at the Supreme Court, there was overwhelming evidence. In fact, if they had ruled otherwise, it would have been a great injustice to the people of Kenya. That is the truth. Anyway, I just want us to leave that for a while because I want uh, all of us to realize what the Chief Justice is going through, okay? I want to realize, I want the nation of Kenya to realize what is going through. I want the people of Kenya to realize what is going through. Now, how do I know what is going through? Because I was in a family where exactly the same thing that is happening to the Chief Justice was happening. And it happened right here in Kenya, okay? So bear with me, let me tell you my story. Chief Justice Maranga reminds me of my late dad. My dad came from a very uh, poverty-stricken family. He was not rich. He did not come from a rich family. Yeah. Uh, he went to school bare feet for the first time. And he had to fight to go to school because his older brother was the one who was favored and taken to school early. And he had to fight to go to school um, and also learn. Yeah. Anyway. He joined the police force and uh, he rose up to a position where he was a very senior uh, person in the police force, very senior, okay? My late dad never took a bribe in his life. In fact, anybody who knew him, even if you go and check on his records, if I gave his name and went and checked on his records in the police force, you will discover that this was an exceptional man. He never took a bribe even one day. Now, anyway, I'm not here to praise my late dad. I'm here to tell you the consequences of standing for the truth. The consequences of being upright, okay? Now, there are various things ha that happen, that, but one incident actually stands out on my mind, okay? Um, uh, at that time, my dad worked in a, as a very senior police officer um, at the port, okay? And what had happened is that uh, a very senior man, actually a state house based person, was about to smuggle uh, out coffee, okay? That time was the time of uh, the Chop Chepkube coffee boom in the 70s, okay? And uh, my dad just said no, he impounded the coffee. Now, his, his boss, who was the police commissioner at that time, called him, and my dad kept on repeating this phone call. And he called him and told him he's very disappointed in him. My dad's response, yes, sir, but sir, uh, I was employed, I was never employed to take a bribe, sir. So if uh, the person behind that person who wants to smuggle the coffee, who is my employer, wants this smuggled, sir, is the one who can come and release it, sir. <laughs> yes, I cannot give you more details for security reasons. I cannot give you more details for my own personal security reasons because certain people somewhere will be able to know exactly where I am, okay? Anyway. This had far-reaching implications because uh, the life of my dad was threatened by none other than the Kiambu Mafia themselves. Yep, I'm not kidding you. For over a month, as my dad took us to school, he would have a very heavy gun, I believe they're called stern guns, yeah, which was on the passenger side, you know, at the bottom of the car, yeah. He would always carry that gun everywhere he went, okay. When he went on duty, 
uh, for example like uh, when he was on duty somewhere like in Mombasa and he would need to stay in a hotel for some certain assignments he would change hotels yeah like the, the hotel where he was officially supposed to sign in he would uh, sign in and everything then shift to another hotel and pay for it from his own pocket okay and in that hotel he would sign in under a false name now the system he had so that he doesn't forget the name he signed in with was to use his own brother's names yeah so on the first day he would use uh, his firstborn brother's name second born etc etc and so on and he kept on shifting them around that's how he survived and there's so many other incidences i can bore you with but let me just leave it at that now my own reaction here is important because at that time i was growing up uh, we had other we were in school with other children i saw that uh, those other children were very privileged my schoolmates okay and uh, for a time for a very long time uh, i have to be honest um, my view was that my father was a fool I mean, everybody was taking bribes. Why does he just, what principles were this he was operating with, yeah? So he just accepts the bribe and, uh, you know, life becomes even better for us. He drove a very old rickety car. Um, other, we had other friends whose dads were also in the police force. And they, not only did they have a very nice family car, uh, there were also extra cars for the kids to drive around. This made me very angry. And I thought my dad was just a fool. And by the way, the time I was doing this reasoning, I was not so young. By this time, I was already in high school. I'd seen all the suffering he had gone through for standing for justice and standing for what is true, yeah, and for refusing to be bribed, okay? So by high school, you know, this is late high school, I was thinking, I, this old man, I'm a principal, Zake, Stampeleka Wapi. Folks, it took over 20 years for me to appreciate what principles mean. It took me over 20 years of my life to appreciate my dad and to appreciate the fact that any suffering you have to go through because you are right, any suffering you have to go through because of justice, God will always protect you. God will always be a protector. God will always fight for you. It doesn't matter even if you don't go to church because my dad never stepped inside a church. <laughs> I never saw him go into a church to worship, yeah? He was just a principled, straightforward man. He used to say, I was trained by the colonialists, yeah? And when he was trained by the colonialists, he was told this is what a policeman should stand for. One, two, three, and that stuck in his head. It never got out of his head. Corruption, no corruption, and so on. And I'll tell you more. There was a time where it reached where his promotions just stopped. Well, of course, he was already very senior. But his promotions just stopped. Yeah? And one of the reasons they stopped is that he refused to take the oath. The oath that was being taken uh, by the Jomo government. Okay? Now I can confirm that firsthand. Okay? Now, the interesting thing about these oaths which I can reveal today is that they were not only being taken by one community, okay? They were spreading oaths to senior officials in government at that time, especially sensitive places like security, okay? Some of his colleagues took these oaths, they climbed up very fast, they even became his bosses and yet they had been his juniors, okay? But my dad stuck by his principle. No oath taking, that is not a policeman's work, yeah? Now, one of his colleagues, in fact from the same area, took a different path, okay? Uh, shall we say he was more liberal? <laughs> he did all those things which were supposed to be done. He took the oaths, uh, he looked the other way, he took bribes, and so on and so forth. And the man became extremely wealthy. In fact, this was one of the people who I used to look up to, I used to look up to and think that my dad was a fool. Now, I don't want to go into details, but this other man died a very terrible death. He was always looking over his shoulder, you know, in retirement, he was always in stress, you know, and a lot of stress in retirement. He went to hospital so many times. He had so many different ailments, etc., etc. In the end, he died a very miserable death, even with all his wealth. <laughs> okay? Even with all his wealth, he died a very miserable death. And uh, in fact, the wealth he left behind had issues. People always fighting over this plot of land, this other plot. You know, just a headache. In sharp contrast, my dad just had enough. He had enough to take all his children through school, up to wherever they wanted, to, whatever level they wanted to go through. And uh, he'd have his quiet beer in the evenings <laughs> and talk about the old days, yes, and give Kumekucha inside information, which has been invaluable in this channel, yes. And uh, when he'd go to bed, he would sleep such a sound sleep that he'd snore until people very far would hear. <sighs> That's a person sleeping very peaceful, no worries, no looking over his shoulder. <laughs> Yeah? One last thing. 
My dad kept on repeating something and he said that the politicians had destroyed the police force. That it had taken many years to build a good police force, but politicians, this is during the Moy days, came in and destroyed it very quickly. Okay? In his view, there was no police force left. Yeah? According to him, there's no police force. That's what he used to say. And indeed, as we go forward, I keep on seeing that every day. I keep on seeing the truth of his words every day in a force which is supposed to protect, which is supposed to, you know, do so many things. He's so corrupt that, uh, anyway, let me just leave it at that. So, folks, the long and short of it is I know what Maraga is going through. I know what Justice Maraga is going through. I know what his family are going through. And I wanted all of you to know what they're going through so that you can remember them in your prayers and so that you can also lift them up to God in your prayers and so that we as a nation can say no to injustice. We can say no to intimidation. I hope I've not bored you guys with a tale about my dad, but that's a man who shaped me to what I am today. I myself have been accused of taking bribes. Somebody has called me uh, somebody who's paid by NASA. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm innocent. I have never accepted a bribe in my life. And I don't think I'll start now. Not I don't think, I will never start now. Not now when our nation needs upright people so much. Okay? I've never in this channel dedicated a recording. But this recording I'd like to de dedicate. This recording is to you, Dad. If I ever become half the man you are, I'll be grateful. Just half. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.